Hey guys, welcome back to Truck and Trailer Tuesday on Tractor Time with Tim. I hope you liked our last week's episode. We were really excited to kind of get to, to know Trooper Hoover and to begin to learn some of the details of the rules and regulations surrounding trucks, trailers, hauling equipment, that type of thing. Last week, we decided that I was a commercial operator. So after that decision, where do we go from here? Well, being that the power unit is what you're operating, what you're basically, this power unit is making you the money. So we're going to jump into, we've deemed that, okay, you're now commercial enterprise. What's the power unit need? So when we're doing our roadside inspections, any spec inspections, we can start off with the power unit. So what's the power unit going to need? Um, how's it going to differ from the other F-350 sit pulled up next to you at the red light? So what we're going to want to see and what the federal regs basically dictate, anything greater than 10,001 pounds, and you can look at that by opening up your door and the VIN tag located either on the inside of the door or inside of the door jam here, we're going to look at that. GVWR is 11.5. So basically with 10,001 being the, the cutoff limit, anything above that being used state to state, this truck would be a commercial motor vehicle. So, being a commercial motor vehicle, we've looked, we've verified the VIN or the GVWRs greater than that. So, what are we going to be looking for next? On both sides of the power unit, we're going to want to see a complete company name. It can be whatever is whatever you want, whatever's basically you register with the feds when you apply for a DOT number. And then, of course, we're going to want to see the verbiage US DOT number, your DOT number, and that's got to be somewhere on both sides of the power unit. Doesn't necessarily mean driver's door, it can be on the back window, it can be as long as it's visible up to 50 feet, highly contrasting. So basically you can't have a light red on a dark red, it would need to be black or something contrasting. Next thing we're going to look for, depending on the size combination, would be the fuel tax. Um, if this being a diesel vehicle, uh, diesel fuel's taxed, and when it comes into a commercial enterprise, you got to track your mileage, track you know what state you operate, at what distances, and then basically that would be displayed with a fuel tax decal, depending on whether you stay in-state, intrastate, or state-to-state, -state, interstate. There would be a decal that would need to be on the vehicle as well. Next thing we look for is an annual inspection. So basically that just means you'd have to take your vehicle to a certified mechanic, have them look it over, they got a list of things and they basically check through, make sure tires, brakes, all the good stuff, lights, everything's working and there typically is a decal on the power unit or you would have paperwork in your possession. And then of course obviously registration, insurance, all that good stuff as well. And then we'd basically just go around the vehicle and check out lights, wipers, washer fluid. And then we'd also check safety equipment, which would be fire extinguisher. Do you have a fire extinguisher? Is it properly mounted? And then also emergency triangles. The three reflective triangles in a box, you'd be required to have those. And then depending on the make and model of the vehicle, you would need to have spare electrical fuses. Or if it's a breaker style, some of the newer vehicles have breaker styles know where those are. We kind of keep that as a catch, get these drivers out here that, yeah, I got my triangles, I got this, but where's your spare electrical fuses? Because I'm sure you've hooked to plenty of makeshift trailers and first thing happens, you blow a fuse going down the road, you need to know where those are. So that kind of in a nutshell is what the power unit itself is going to need when we've determined, hey, you're a commercial enterprise. Okay. So let's review some of those items. Mm -hmm. You're going to be looking for the USDOT number and our business name on the Correct. side. Correct. Um, you're going to be looking for fuel tax information. And now, mm -hmm. what do I have to do to track fuel tax? Basically, what that is, is once you set up a, a commercial account with the feds in the state, they'll basically give you all the information you need and basically state, okay, for the fuel tax, you're going to have to track how many miles you drive commercially in the state of Indiana, Illinois, Kentucky, wherever you're going. And then at the end of the year, basically, they'll show you what you, what you owe in road use taxes 
and then they'll div divide that up per the different states. And like I said, if you ever look on semi-tractors or the bigger trucks, you'll see those different colored stickers. Those are those fuel tax stickers. So when we're at the scale facility checking if there's quick glance, we can see, boom, yep, they've got a current. And then they'll have a company and cab card with that that will show the company name and the decal. Okay. On that. And next up was annual inspection. Is this mm -hmm. nationwide or is this Indiana? Yes, this is a federal requirement. Okay. Federal requirement. And like I said, the issuance of a decal on the vehicle, that's kind of an optional thing, but what's not optional is having the annual inspection. So you could either display the decal on the vehicle, inside the door, wherever, or you can have the full form with you to be compliant with that. Okay, and then uh, the next two items were normal, registration, mm -hmm. and then you said uh, a fire extinguisher has to be on mm -hmm. board, mm -hmm. and we have to have the triangles. Correct, correct, as well as spare electrical fuses. Okay, mm -hmm. spare electrical fuses, that's one mm -hmm. more. Wow. Yeah, I need to make a list. <laughs> so don't hesitate that, you know, if anybody out there is <laughs> venturing into this and you need that help, hit us up. We'd be more than happy to give you the phone numbers, give you the information you need to help you make it as easy as possible. Now you've got a Facebook page, right? Yes, yes. It's uh, Indiana State Police Commercial Vehicle Enforcement Division. Usually when you get Indiana State Police Commercial, you're going to find us there. Uh, that's where I share tips, tricks, show violations so that others can look, inspect their equipment better, and hopefully avoid those roadside inspections. And like I said, you got a question, anything, hit that uh, message button. It comes straight to me 24 hours a day, but I try to Try to not make the wife too upset, and but you know we'll get those questions answered for you and get you pointed in the right direction. Thanks very much, Trooper Hoover. Yeah. We really appreciate it, and I'm sure this is, well, it's topics I'd never heard of. I oh mean, yeah, an amazing amount of detail that we have to be worried about uh, when we're operating a truck. It I is. think you should have bought an F250. <laughs> but that's no fun. But I that's hook it to a trailer, fun. and it still yeah. would require all this item. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So any vehicle over ten thousand. GVR yes. or any combination. A vehicle or a combination greater than 10,001 traveling state to state requires the US DOT. Yes, would be classified. The yep. Okay. For the for the vehicle. Mhm. Mm well, thanks Trooper Hoover, and thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. get those stickers. Once you, once you apply and get a DOT number, you can just take that to any sign shop anywhere and say, hey, I need US the DOT number 123. The magnetic ones. Right. You can? I can't. It's aluminum. Oh, it's, this is one of them aluminum? Oh, well, you're right. I didn't think about that. <laughs> yeah.